talk about your assignment turn in. So you guys all should probably focus. Um, so you guys created a dynamic pattern. I forgot where I saved mine, but you saw what I had on the actual assignment sheet. Um, that would be okay, there. Assignments. Nope, I don't have it there. Projects, topographic aperture, right? Um, so you saw what I had here, right? It's just a, a black profile. Um, I am okay with you guys doing this, essentially. Um, these tools, these are terrible. Zoom, um, fit height. Okay, so I'm okay with you basically doing that, right? You just, all I did for this one is I changed the background in Rhino, and then I just took a screenshot capture of it at maximum size, and then I just put it on a sheet. That's okay for now. Um, so what I'm gonna ask you for is to um, go into options. After, you're, after you change everything to black, remember I want everything to be in black. It is a silhouette pattern. Um, go into options, open up um, colors. And what you're gonna change here is background. Just change that to white, hit okay. That whole thing will become white back there. So it's easy for you. I don't want to see. I don't want to see the the thing or the rectangle or square around it. So please um, put that on a layer like this, and then turn that layer off, so that all you see is the pattern. And you can use this very very nifty feature that Windows has that every single one of you should um, know and love as much as I do. Uh, it's called snipping tool. This thing will revolutionize your life, okay? So all you do when you need to send an image on screen to someone for whatever reason is you just drag this little box around your pattern like so. It does that and you can control copy and paste it into anything you want. So feel free at this stage to do it in Word, Photoshop, however you want to set it up, it's up to you. Um, I just want it on an eight and a half by 11 sheet, and I want it to be maximized to some kind of reasonable margin. So about an inch or a half an inch is fine. Um, where's my fit the page? Okay, there's my um, eight and a half by 11 sheet. I just control V and I paste it right in there. Just maximize it to whatever size you need. And then underneath, I want your name. And then I want a description of each pattern that you created. I want you to tell me what your pattern is. Okay, so this one happens to be a gradient growing from bottom left to top right in the B domain direction. That's it, that's one pattern. And then I'll just go down and I say, the next one is an attractor point, you know, just whatever you did. So I did attractor point at four corners. Um, actually, a tractor point scaling squares at four corners or something like that, right? You guys get the idea. So I want to see a description of all three levels of your pattern at the bottom of the page. That's it. What questions do you have? It's easy, right? I'm not, I'm not running you through the ringer on uh, doing all Photoshop stuff and making it all super perfect. I want to see that you know how to communicate what you did. Yes? How do you turn off the grid on Rhino? Go to options, grid, and then... Good question. How do you turn off the grid in Rhino? Um, I'll go to a view that has a grid. Um, you just type in grid, mm -hmm. and then H, oh. and then enter to close the command. Yes? Thank you. Background white. Background white. 
type in options, go down to appearance and colors, the submenu colors under appearance, and change background. Any other questions? OK, cool. So um, I'm going to continue to work with those of you who are not done your pattern. For those of you who are done your pattern, um, please make sure that you format your pattern that way, like you see here. And then I want you to save this file. I think I created a drop folder already. Yeah, just save it in this folder right here under uh, projects, project one, topographic aperture, and just call it, what, you can give it a fancy name if you want, but I want you to just start with your own name. Cupcake, yeah. Oh. Well, I, I would advise you not to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. But if you if if it help, well, let me let me kind of go back to that. You can name it whatever you want, whatever kind of crazy name you want. But I hope that you have a legitimate reason for it. So if for some reason, like if if one of your patterns is about a cupcake pattern, you know, whatever. You can make it, you can call it cupcake, right? But I just want you guys to be very intentional about how you name things because you're going to think back on this stuff like six years down the road. Maybe not six years, maybe two years. But uh, you're going to think back on something that you did in this class and you're going to want to do it again. And, and you're not going to be able to find it because you're going to have all these GH files that are named weird things. So yeah, just try to be intentional.